Jesus fucking Christ, look at this thing. It's moving so goddamn slow. Just kidding, we're going... 18, 9 to 20, 22, 23. Oh, fuck, it's going skyrocketing through the roof. Can't you guys see this? It's absolutely fan motherfucking fantastic. I hope that the audio is coming through. And look at this. We got a stand around loaded in. We're just going to go right through the turret. 425 of beautiful Hyrule. That, my good sir, was wonderful. We need to do it again. Hello, everybody. It's a City Mad Haven here today. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, editing cut that I was doing. That was me testing the audio from the replays going back over. I thought it was a little bit funny and felt like you guys would laugh at that. Well, as you guys saw, we are checking out the T1105 today. This is my first tier 10 that I ever unlocked. It is the tier 10 American T1105. Now, the T1105 inside the matchmaking, it, it is struggling a little bit with its 230 millimeters on the hatch. Uh, the accuracy a lot of the tanks right now are just making this thing feel a little bit obsolete. Kind of hoping that Wargaming is going to be going through buffing a couple of tanks and doing a couple of fixes if they leave the accuracy the way it is. Now, I've got two replays for you guys today, but before we jump into those, I'm definitely going to be wanting to show you guys what this tank is all about. So, the T1105, you have a boat-shaped hull. And what this boat shape hull allows you to do is over angle. As you can see, we still hold an auto ricochet position coming out at around, let's say, a 20 degree angle coming out. Now, because your sides are 44 millimeters and it's a boat shape, it requires a 132 millimeter caliber to overmatch that. So against 130s on Russian tanks and against 125 millimeters, or... 127s like the Badger, for instance, or against any 120 you can side scrape against. The tank handles extremely well inside the matchmaking, except for now. Yes, the hatch is lacking just a little bit. It's not too bad. The lower plate, really, really iffy. Now, pulling out, this is on an older update compared to PC for console, but it's a great representation for what the tank is, can do. So, yeah, you know, there's there's not much to go over. 258 standard pin along with that 340 heat pin the tank overall is fantastic holds up super well so far from what i've been experiencing but right away let's go ahead and jump inside the first replay now your 340 heat pin you know you have 400 alpha the t1105 overall extremely solid tank if you guys are on your way to get this just know whenever you do get your hands on it you are going to enjoy the absolute crap out of it. So my setup that I'm running on the T1105 today is vertical stabilizers, which is now a new system, which I'm going to have to start remembering what it's called. And along with that, we're not running much to bolster the view range except for situa situational awareness, as my brain is struggling to just talk this morning. Oh my goodness. All right, well, you know, <laughs> it is Monday after all. I don't expect anyone to be operating at their 100% capacity on a Monday. So with situational awareness, you are capable of getting your view range up to 424 meters. I'm running with a gun rammer and improved ventilation. So 424 meters of view range. I'm probably going to be switching that around to... I'd say coated optics to get the extra 10% to bolster that up to like 466 just to get the extra overall view range. Now, penciling on this map that we are on right now, I like to sometimes take the right side, but as I was thinking about it, looking at the way the teams are lined up, I'm thinking I want to head down and go to the left side because that's going to be where most of the heavies are going to be located. And sadly, we did just take a shot. Nice early, already down to 1,858. So, you know, just slowly working away up around the side here, knowing that we are definitely going to be needing some heavy support up on this side. Now, rather than taking the center path that a lot of people go for, the little heavy tank alley there, I want to cut through the buildings because I know of a spot right here that I like to hit. With the 8 degrees of gun depression that the T1105 offers you, 
you can really work a ridge line with this tank, especially if you're driving up and around a corner, just getting back up to take a couple of shots. The eight degrees is really, really nice. Not just that, in this position, it's really hard to hit the hatch just because you have all the little panelings there that are still full. So even if they were to come down, the chances of them going through the hatch in this spot is very difficult. Sadly, as you guys probably already saw, we did not get much action in this position from the, the very intro to the video, which, you know, me, I, I thought it was funny. I wanted to share it with you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. So, we're going to be pulling up and heading up on the side. Now, I do have a couple of friends who like to go over patch notes. And after they mentioned this to me, a lot of stuff came to me very clear, and I felt like sharing this with you guys. So, they increased the AP rounds, so your standard rounds, penetrations. They increased the high roll chance of penetration rounds of every single tank. However, they decreased the chances of us getting a high alpha roll, which means rather than the old percentage that we had to get high rolls, it's now a 25% chance per shell, which means one in four shells might possibly be a high roll. So 357 so far within the first three minutes of match, we're up to 1,181 along with 353 assisted. So, boom, 367 straight through the front of the E100. Yes, I did load a couple of extra premium rounds inside of my OE5, and that was just because, well, in moments like this, they were needed and I'm happy that I had them loaded. And, yeah, it's a little bit costly, but, you know, with the plus one, minus one going on, I've been having an absolute blast playing inside my tier eight. So firing off a couple of extra premium rounds, to me, did not seem too bad. I'm not a big fan of just firing nothing but premium, but there's moments that it's always nice to have the extra penetration. Especially in that situation right there, I probably would have already gone through every single one of my premium rounds if I didn't have them set up the old way. So, the mouse and the E100 are now both down for the count. We are down to 1,164 hit points left, already up to 2,644, and still 353 spot assist. Now, something that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, right there, we shot through the truck. If you were to do that with a heat round, um, heat will stop on whatever they get in the way of. They do not go through obstacles. AP and APCR will go through obstacles. However, there's a couple of things I am going to be checking out today, later on. I'm going to be checking to see if APCR loses penetration value if you do shoot through obstacles and if AP rounds lose velocity and if they lose penetration if they go through obstacles. So just a couple of things to be checking out. So far, 3,800 and it's only been about the first five minutes into this match. Down to 16 standards and from what I remember we have eight premium rounds left. 468 assisted damage. T1105. Gotta love this tank. All the way. Even though they have been screwing around with penetration values, accuracy values, all sorts of things, making it to where rounds have higher chances to go through tanks with AP, which I have been noticing a lot of now that he, then, now that he has mentioned that. There's been a couple of moments that I wouldn't have expected them to go through, but they've been going through. Now, taking our slow, sweet time against this OE5. Gotta love the boat hauls. Seriously. Lined up. Trying to hit the ammo rack. It's on the right side or left side. Just gotta aim a little bit lower towards the drive wheels. On the OE5. And... The last shot that hit him... This is something that, in my opinion, they're going to be needing to fix. Um, making it to where we can see what was last damaged on the tank. So, our ally, the light tank, damaged his gun. When in fact, that's information that, sure, it's nice to know, but down at the bottom right of the screen, we can already see that the gun was damaged. And, ooh, bat chat behind us, 411. And we try to get one more shot off, but we missed. And we were taken out of the fight. Object 268 version 5. That big, fat, derpy gun. So what's left? The Amex 13105. Can he? No, he cannot make it. He tried his hardest though. Definitely tried his hardest. 
Ah, oh, defeat. But we still ripped out 5,000 damage. And 5,110, 468 assisted. We definitely had a really good performance. And will you look at that? 94.89%. So, the next match, Melanovka. Now, the T1105 has been around for a long time inside this game. It has been buffed, it has been debuffed, but since the last buff they have put on it, they haven't really done too much to the tank. Now, I would love to see a little bit of love spread to quite a few tanks. For instance, the IS-4, the E-100, the T-1105, and there's a couple others on the list as well that need a little bit of love. The E-100 right now has a turret armor of 250, while PC recently got buffed to 270. Now, if console got that 270 buff, I would probably be playing my E100 like a madman, enjoying everything that the thing has to offer, even with the 250 that we have on it. It is still a very good tank. If you guys have one, get it out there, go nuts inside the matchmaking. You know, and just to have a little bit of fun, load 20 standards and 21 premium rounds, just because it's 2021. And the IS-4, the love that it needs is not much. The top plate on top of the turret, so the forehead, is only 30 millimeters, which means that with 90 millimeters on your gun, a 90 millimeter gun can overmatch the top armor of the IS-4. Now, on PC, they recently buffed that top plate on the forehead, the 50.8. And what 50.8 does is prevent 155 millimeter guns from going through that spot, making it not a weak spot anymore. I mean, even if they were to bump it up to 50, just to prevent 120s from going through it, and anything under 150 caliber, that would be fantastic. Now, right here inside this position, we were also showing this off just a little bit, the way that the T1105 works with its boat haul is that the angle that is away from the enemy is the thickest. So even though our lower plate is poking out around this corner, the chances of him going through are extremely low just because it's angled against him. Now I could have pulled out and gave him the boat haul, but you see we want to kind of hug this little ridge line here, this little crest on the hill, because it makes artillery have harder shots to get. So that's what we're doing. Just gonna hug the side and see what we can do. So far, Kampan's a 50 ton and looks like an Andre the Giant coming up. And Andre the Giant, on his way down, got absolutely ripped apart. Artillery splashes behind us, takes our tracks off. Lucky for us, we were not pushed up. If we were pushed up, we would have been forced to use a repair kit and then be out of a repair kit for the next 60 seconds. Now, 60 seconds on our repair kit times, for me, um, I do feel like that is a little bit fast. I would like them to see them lower that down to about 90 seconds like it is on PC. Because with the 60 second recharge time, depending on the match that you are in, you can use it 14 times in a single match. Which means if you get hit in the ammo rack twice in a single match, every single minute you can pop it. So, I do feel like it is going by extremely fast. And right here we started to load the heat rounds just because the compounds are, our accuracy on our gun is not the greatest. We are not running many perks to bolster our accuracy. The only one that we are running is steady aim for the extra 10%. Along with that we're also running vertical stabilizers. So a total of 30% accuracy onto the gun. But even with 30% accuracy, our gun dispersion is still only, as everything loads, 0.31 so 0 0.31 at that range yeah as you guys can see shots were landing but loading the heat just made things a lot easier for us and pulling up going in for the ram doing a little bit of damage and taking the tracks off him using the repair kit to get them back up and since we are head to head that hatch is extremely hard to go through because of how far he has to aim up now the t 11 5 is a mid-range to close-range fighter. This tank at long range is not going to be performing the way you want it to. If you can, this tank is more of a brawling tank, working the corners, and all sorts of fun stuff. 
there's going to be a couple more things around the end of the video that we're going to go over just to give you guys an idea on how to work with a big old fat cupola. Now, right here, we're up to 2,479 damage blocked. We're at 1,962 assisted with 1,065 damage dealt. So far, we are extremely close to 4,000 combined, just 100 short. Which, for the T1105 right now, if you guys want to get out there and try to mark this tank, if you already have one, keep in mind the damage standing inside this tank at the moment for a third mark is only 3,500 damage match as of 1-4-2021. And so far, taking a hit from the Yag Tiger, dropping us down to 1660. First shot of the game that's landed on us so far. And because the T32 to our left doesn't exactly have the greatest view range, we were the ones that spotted the Yag Tiger, which is giving us all of the spot assist. And on the move here, ooh, well you look at that. That did not look nice at all. Now, we take a little bit of a peek at the uh, menu here, and we realize, oh no, that's a four, oh man, that, that is a absolute death star round that hit us. So, we were throttling it there for a moment, came to a stop after we were unspotted to sit behind the bushes, just because we want them to think that we tried to keep on pushing down into the little ridge there. As you guys can see, there's a 183 on the enemy team, and I'm pretty sure he's the one that hit us with a Hesh round or even an AP round. Now, there is something that I'm going to throw out there. When you guys are playing inside your 10s, your 9s, make sure that you keep track of your side armor. For instance, the M103, the other day I had one pull out on me, and I was inside my 60 TP, and he was side scraping. He sent me a message after I penetrated him with every single round while he was side scraping, calling me a cheater and a hacker. So I replied to him saying that your side armor is not thick enough to stop the shell. I told him the caliber of the weapon, if the armor is not three times the value, or if the weapon is not three times the value of the armor, it will be overmatched. For instance, his 44 millimeters on his side armor is no match for the 152 caliber weapon that the 60 TP has. So when you guys do jump out in the queues, make sure that you're keeping track of your armor. Just try your best to get everything going, especially inside those super heavies, or even moderately heavy tanks like the T1105 right here. The T1105 performs more like a medium and a heavy mix. Overall, it is still a very solid tank and holds up extremely well. Now, into the game is approaching. We have a tank destroyer left and two artilleries. We are up to 3,400 if you round it off. Assist damage along with 2,900 damage dealt if you round it off. And taking it slow here because I do not want to get shot by a tank destroyer. Bushes are your best friends. And as you guys see on the map, the tank destroyer was spotted out down near the bottom left. So I felt a little bit more comfortable to just start throttling it and using the 37 kilometer max speed that the T11 OE5 is capable of achieving. Now, if you do want to run fuel on this, you do get a 5% speed bonus, which I do think can get you up to 39, just to give you that extra little bit of speed to get in position. But you are sacrificing reload and a little bit of view range by taking off that premium consumable. Ooh, wow, I just barely noticed this. 3,519 blocked. Our hit point pool is only 2,200. We definitely blocked more than what we're worth. You know, just slowly making it up the hill here, going 23, 24. Yeah. Decent speeds. The terrain resistance on this, I am extremely excited for whenever they decide to bring back everything to give us more statistics. And putting a 406, and ooh, taking out by artillery. I do not want to see gamer tags. I want to see what artillery killed me. And here I am, looking at my tank, wondering where the marks went. <laughs> <laughs> but so far the t 1105 even though accuracy has been buffed like absolutely no other and that hatch is huge on the t 1105 it still holds up extremely well inside the matchmaking 
if played correctly. There is a book that was already written that you guys should take your time out to read. Just kidding, I don't think there's a book. <laughs> and we made a profit that match, 3,526. Mastery badge and the entire reason for the video. We three marked our first tier 10 that we ever got. The T11 OE5 has got to be one of my favorite tier 10s. It is also my first tier 10. So, I want to know what tier 10 your guys' first tier 10 was. I want to know what tier 10 is going to be your first tier 10. Just because it always makes a difference to remember them. I honestly don't remember my second tier 10. I cannot remember what tank I got. Or my third, or my fourth. I, I do believe my second tier 10 was the E100, and then immediately after, I got the M48 Patton. Or I could be wrong. I could have got my T1105, and then my M48 Patton, and then the E100. But, that's that. Well, for now, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to go over real fast, if you guys are still here. The T1105, from what I was talking about, whenever you're coming around a corner, let's say you're coming around a corner like this. Your hatch is exposed. You want to try and get your sides out. So as you come out right here, your hatch is now poking out. The best way to counteract this is to turn your gun outward. So now, your tracks are slowly poking out. Your gun's also being poking out, but you see you're coming around the corner, and your hatch is no longer showing around the corner. This is a great way to prevent people from hitting your hatch. Along with the other side... Just rotate your turret out just a little bit as you're coming around that corner just to make it to where all they see is the front of your turret, your side. And then if you lower your gun just a little bit too, you can prevent people from overmatching your rear armor if they are smart about it. But making that shot is extremely difficult. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know I did. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. And let me know how you guys felt about the first 30 seconds, because honestly, I fell over dying after I listened to it for the first time. Um, if you guys put down in the comments that there's conversation potential, I will take the time out and try to have a conversation with you guys. If you have questions on anything, be my guest and ask. During live streams that I have throughout the week, I try my best to answer your guys' questions that you have and showing off tanks that you guys want to see. So until then, have a great day. Great morning, great afternoon, whatever time it is for you. I'm out of here. See you on the battlefield.